Okay, let's kick up the session of the decoupled layout builder in core. No, I'm just doing. Come in, every, <laughs> everyone ready. Welcome to this uh, board, public board meeting and, and general a chat with you. And we want to actually use the opportunity to listen to your questions and what you want to hear about what the Drupal Association is doing. Um, there is this uh, thing that we have to do, uh, or we don't have to do, but there is official part as a board um, that we have to go through by taking off uh, the last minutes, which is everything is published on Drupal.org, so you can read up on all the things that we are doing. But most important, there are certain things that we have to go through, so we are going to do that really quickly. Uh, the board did meet in Paris. Uh, come in. See familiar color? It's the Red Army. <laughs> Yeah, there's enough space. So, so in a in a board meeting, we try to then make decisions of and checking off uh, things that we have agreed on and said that we want to move forward. So, our last board meeting that was in Pittsburgh, we also had a really good attendance. Uh, and back then, we actually decided on three new strategic initiatives for the Drupal Association, which Tim is going to tell us all about quickly. He's going to give us an update. Maybe we can go through the agenda. So we are, gonna, we are doing the welcoming, that's the welcoming, and we are going to briefly allow everyone to maybe say their names, if this is, I think it is, uh, no, this, this, the board. It's fine, Tiffany, sit down there. Um, uh, that's going to be the welcome, then we are going to do the short update of uh, what the Drupal Association is doing, and we are, of course, like writing a lot of blog posts, and we are trying to be as public about what we are doing. Uh, we are doing our best. Um, but I think we can always do more, and therefore your feedback is welcome. We, n we are going to approve the last two meeting minutes. Um, that's going to be very quick, but we need to have an approval because this is official board meeting. Then uh, we, had a, we are having some people leaving the board, including myself, because uh, our terms are due. Uh, and then we have new people coming to the board, and we need to... Maybe, if we agree. <laughs> we could disagree. Uh, we both had a common uh, community elected board member uh, being elected now recently. I hope you all voted. I hope you're all a member of the Drupal Association. And then we also had uh, some nominations from the board. And we are going to go through this slate. Then we are going to end the meeting and start the Q&A. And we are going to try to do this in uh, maybe 15 minutes maximum. And then actually hear from you what your questions are. So to kick it off, let's uh, hear briefly from who you are, where are you from. Uh, I will start. Patti from Iceland. I'm current board chair. Uh, Tim Doyle uh, from the U.S. I'm the CEO of the Drupal Association. Hello, Rosal Vinana, working in the European Commission. I'm from Spain, but I'm living in Brussels. Hi, I'm Nikhil Deshpande. Uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, my name is Nick Fienhoff. I'm from Belgium, 30 minutes away with the car, uh, not very far, um, and I work for GitLab. Hi, Lynn Kaposi from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Mike Herschel from Gainesville, Florida in the U.S., probably about a couple hours away by car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tiffany Ferris. I'm uh, from Chicago. I am with Palantir. Nikki Flores. I'm here from Lansing, Michigan in the United States, and I work with Lullabot. I'm Dries, originally from Belgium, now live in Boston, and uh, yeah. <laughs> originally. <laughs> I just lean on you. Uh, I'm Ryan Zarama from Greenville, South Carolina. That's in the Blue Ridge Mountains, um, and I'm the CEO of Centauro, uh, the company behind Drupal Commerce. Owen Lansbury from Australia. Uh, work with the previous Next and treasurer of the Drupal Association Board. Wow, and then we need something, we need to have the time. What time is it, Tim? 4.19. Okay, 4.19, the meeting is set. I call the meeting to order. <laughs> Start. Okay, do you want to sit down? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we have the, the first topic is um, a DA Drupal Association update. Uh, I'm happy, some chairs right here behind me if you, okay. Um, uh, I'm happy to uh, provide a, a five-minute, maybe six-minute update on everything that the Drupal Association has been doing. Not everything, 
Uh, but let's start with uh, the new strategic plan. Uh, it was back in June of this year that the board approved a new strategic plan uh, during DrupalCon Pittsburgh in North America. Uh, it's a three-year plan and it has three objectives. Uh, the, the objectives are innovation, marketing, and fundraising. For innovation, the objective is that Drupal becomes the most innovative, the most impactful web platform in the world by promoting the open web. For marketing, the objective is that the Drupal brand is recognized globally as a platform of choice for ambitious end users in government, business, and beyond. And in fundraising, the objective is that the Drupal Association takes a leadership role in raising funds for community initiatives. So I'd like to go through each one and give you an update on what we've done since. So this plan was approved in June. It's on our website. You can read the full plan. I'd like to go what we've been doing since June. Uh, in, the, in terms of innovation, we've had two things going on. First, Pitchburg. You might have heard about it. It was a contest that was part of, uh, Trees came up for, for DrupalCon Pitch, uh, Pittsburgh, thus we call it Pitchburg, um, where community members could submit videos of proposals for innovations to, the, to Drupal for review by a panel of judges. Uh, this was the, the goal was to spur people thinking and getting excited about innovation. So we were able to raise $98,000 from partners that included Acquia, 1X Internet, Palantir, Digital Polygon, Zucha, Skilled, and ImageX. There were 29 submissions, seven were funded. We had money to fund seven. One has already been completed and about $13,000 has been, have been issued. So I think we're on track for, for a successful initiative. This was a test case to see how uh, innovation could be or could not be uh, driven by raising money from partners to fund ideas from the community. The second is our Drupal Certified Partner Program. It was, it's been mentioned a couple times during the DrupalCon. Uh, we will be enhancing that program to make it sure it's 100% focused on makers, the companies that are makers in the Drupal community, and then promoting their work and promoting getting more makers into the Certified Partner Program. We believe if we have more makers, we will naturally have more innovation. So our goal is uh, rolling out a new or an enhanced Drupal Certified Partner Program in 24 with a focus on makers. In terms of marketing, if you were at the Dries Note, you've heard some of this, so I won't spend too much time. Uh, the Drupal Association, under the auspices of our marketing working group, of which Lynn and Nikhil are members, and Suzanne Durgachev uh, with Evolving Web has been participating, uh, has been working with an outside consultant to develop a marketing strategy for Drupal as a product. So not the Drupal, not marketing Drupal Association, not marketing services, looking at Drupal as a product, uh, like a go-to-market plan, uh, and. From that, we'll develop the strategy, and then we'll have a number of initiatives that come out. So that should be hopefully done by December. The board, if they approve it, will start those activities in, uh, in, in the new year, 24. Uh, we also, if you heard, we're attending uh, Web Summit uh, 2023 in Lisbon. Uh, we are a platinum, we meaning the Drupal Association with four partners, are a platinum sponsor of, an, of, a, um, of a booth at Web Summit, if you're not familiar with Web Summit, it's a very large tech conference that's not in the community, it's outside the community, uh, and that's intentional, because our goal is to begin marketing to those who are not believers. How do we get to the not believers into the Drupal community? And we wanna do that by going to tech conferences that folks are going to. So when they walk down the exhibit hall and they see Adobe, they see whatever, they're all gonna see, see Drupal. And the marketing, again, will be on Drupal, the product, not on any of the partners. Uh, the, the partners we have on that, 1X Internet, Acquia, Phase 2, and FFW are, are the seed partners on that. If this model works, we want to continue this as a model of getting partners together, market Drupal at non-Drupal conferences. Uh, we're very excited about that. Um, third objective, fundraising. Uh, we have a focus on philanthropy. Um, and I don't know where I got that picture, but it says philanthropy in. So I thought, well, that's where we want to stay. Let's stay at the philanthropy in. Um, that's the only picture I could come up with that. It's in the Drupal Village. It's in the Drupal Village, that's right. <laughs> Perfect, thank you, Tim. Um, <clears throat> so on philanthropy, uh, we have a number of things going on. I'm excited to 
to let you know that we've uh, already been successful in receiving a three hundred thousand dollar grant from a from a film from a tech fund um, on that. Uh, uh, we have hired uh, Julia Cranstor, who's our uh, full-time philanthropic expert on staff at the DA, and will be leading our efforts in being in the philanthropy. Um, so that's one thing we've already done since June. Um, second is looking at how we can increase uh, revenues from programming that we can then plow back into the community. So how do we increase revenues at Drupal Cons, uh, Drupal Steward Program, uh, Drupal Certified Partners, in order to uh, invest that money back into the marketing innovation initiative that we talked about. Um, that's, uh, so that's kind of everything that we've been doing since June. Um, this is uh, our strategic plans on our website. Uh, our goal is to update the progress towards our goals uh, every three months, and so you can go there and find that out. Uh, last thing I'll say before we end, um, one of my goals, I've, I've been here about a year. Next week will be my one-year anniversary. I'll be one year old. Um, uh, so thank you. <laughs> But the, uh, I do want to say the first uh, five months, uh, four or five months, I had a lot of calls with CEOs across, you know, our members, the U.S., Europe, et cetera. Um, after four or five months, Body said, start doing something. Don't just start talking. <laughs> but <laughs> what I heard, what I heard in that was uh, from the European community, from the CEOs, uh, something that I intentionally spent the last 12 months trying to begin to make inroads, and that's that the DA is too U.S. focused and we need to be more global. Uh, yeah. so, so I do... I do want to go over some things that we've been doing over the last 12 months to address that. Um, and I will take any feedback folks have. I have a, a large team of staff here uh, ex explicitly for the purpose of understanding what's going on here and how can we better serve. But in the last 12 months, we've, we've hired on the DA staff two uh, staff from Spain. Uh, we have two Pittsburgh winners. We talked about Pittsburgh um, are in, from Europe. Uh, uh, Franz Cum and Factorial are both Pittsburgh winners. Uh, we're holding Web Summit. The, tech, the technology conference we decided to go first was a European tech conference, and that was intentional. Uh, we have received a grant, as I said, from a European tech fund. That's where it came from. Uh, we, you will hopefully, in a few minutes, more than half of our board members will be from overseas outside the U.S. Um, we are actively engaged in the Cyber Resiliency Act, which is a EU regulation, European Union regulation. That is, uh, we've worked with Typo3 and WordPress and Joomla. Oh, Matias. Oh, yeah, thank you. Matias is here from Typo3. Yep. If there's information on our website, but we've been um, active in, in, there's grave concerns that the way it's written now is going to negatively impact uh, open source software. It's treating open source software like super well-funded proprietary software from the U.S. or from anywhere, and, and that's problematic. More information on our website, but we've been very active on that area. Um, three of the... Um, uh, Pittsburgh judges uh, that, that rated the Pittsburgh were European companies. We split, so Skilled, Zucha, and One X Internet. So these are just the beginnings of really my efforts to try to make sure that the Drupal Association is not too U.S. focused. Um, so I, throughout this conference, I'll take any more feedback you have on what we could do, be doing more. And with that, that is the uh, DA update, and we will move to approval of the meeting minutes. Yeah, I want to... On top of this, what he said, because this is a little bit of new things, and we think that it's important to talk about that. But we also have an incredible staff of the DA in here. Raise your hand, please. The engineering team, program team, the events team, marketing. And all of you that are here, um, you know, they are also just doing what they are doing the best and running the infrastructure, making sure that we can deploy code, we can do uh, amazing events as well, and, and all the things that you're doing. So I just wanted to make sure that that's not forgotten, uh, and thank you for all of that. So let's do the approval of the meeting minutes. We have sent all the meeting minutes to our uh, board, and uh, I think that there's just, we want to just do a vote. Um, yeah, so that all there's... Favor, all in favor of approving the minutes? Say yeah. aye, aye, aye. 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 Any uh, opposed? Okay, good. Approved. Check. Uh, this is all going to be published on uh, Drupal.org, uh, as well as with, uh, all the last board meetings that we put out, I think, last year, after the feedback from you. So thank you for that. I think we need to raise a motion and second it. Yeah, you really need to. I will raise a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Done. Done. And approve a, a, yeah. Thank you, Tiffany. That's a, that's a correct. It, it's a, it's a board. It is a public uh, like a public yep. company. So we are. Yeah. 
non-profit. We have to apply. <laughs> All right, then Nikhil. All right, so um, as, as the chair of the nominating committee, it's my pleasure, as we have reached the last section of um, this, this meeting, um, as far as the presentation. So one thing that's important ne that needs to be said is that as per the bylaws, established procedures, you know, we will be going through this voting process. The, the nominees that we have carefully considered and selected for their exceptional contributions to the Drupal community, their passion for open source software, and their dedication to the goals and mission of the Drupal Association. I believe their expertise and commitment make them ideal candidates for the Drupal Association Board. Uh, as you can see up here, um, there are obviously certain criteria that we, we looked at while considering these nominees. And based on their additions, you know, it, anytime you change the board, there is a change in dynamic. But happy to say that with the addition of the new nominees, our geographic diversity actually went up. Our gender diversity is going up. The agency representation and developer expertise has stayed as consistent as it has been. And our age diversity has gone up. Well, in a way that we have more younger people. <laughs> <laughs> so um, having said that, um, Happy to, happy to announce that in our class two director, um, we are nominating Imre Gmelig Majling. Oh. Hi, Imre. Hi. Hi. Imre. Yeah. Imre is a managing partner at Dutch digital agency React Online, a former chair of the Dutch Drupal Association. He has been contributing to Drupal for over 16 years. His contributions include being a lead organizer of Dutch Drupal Camp, Drupal Jam, DrupalCon Europe Advisory Committee, and a co-founder and organizer of the Splash Awards. He has also been a speaker for Drupal at Drupal events and digital marketing events, international and regional marketing, and has also worked on the advisory committee for DrupalCon Europe. Um, the second name, which is Tiffany Ferris, we, we all know Tiffany, and we are, we are happy to you know, move her into her second term. Uh, but the third name, Lenny Moskalik. Uh, Lenny is a senior project manager at Kokomore AG, as well as a co-organizer of Drupal Camp Kiev. She has worked on the advisory board for Drupal Camp Europe since 2021, including assisting with DrupalCon Lille and DrupalCon Prague. More recently, Lenny won the Women in Drupal 2023 award for the scale category at DrupalCon Lille. Lenny has had a strong presence in the Drupal community for nearly a decade. Other experiences include working with Time Out Digital, Lemberg Solutions, and the Event Organizers Working Group. Then we have a Class 3 Director uh, nomination for Piyush Padar. Piyush will be serving the remainder of the one-year term. Uh, vacated by Rahul. Um, Piyush is currently the VP of Sales and Partnerships at Accelerant. Passionate about the Drupal community, he co-founded Jaipur Drupal User Group and is one of the co-founding board members of the Drupal Association of India. He has regularly worked with both Indian and international Drupal communities in organizing many Drupal events and being a regular track chair and speaker at Drupal Cons and jury at Splash Awards. In his podcasts, Human Behind Digital Experiences at Accelerant, he speaks to digital agency leaders empowering some of the biggest brands with transformative technology. 
Let's give it up for Piyush. Then we are happy to nominate the at-large director, uh, Faye Lauren, who has been very overwhelmingly um, <laughs> chosen by. <laughs> On the executive committee's side, we are happy to have Owen Lansbury as our next chair for the DA. Secretary will be me. Uh, <laughs> treasurer, we're happy to have Tiffany Ferris walk into that role. Well, actually, you are into that role. Which <laughs> extend in that role. Um, our founding director, you may have heard, Dries. Um, and one thing that we are changing here is we are introducing an immediate past chair, which is going to be a non-voting position, which Bhati has very, um, you know, kindly agreed to um, help us in the transition. So this, this does not give, you know, a, a, a cut in the or transition between the two chairs. So um, having said that, I don't know what the, what the practice is for the voting. Shortly. So, uh, just maybe you all just don't know that that we are, you know, maybe you're going to talk about that briefly too. But we are having two people or three going out from the board. Uh, it's because of the bylaws. You can only be three years, and you can do two terms and six years, and so on. And and also, what you uh, what he was represent like talking about class two and class three. That was the the formal nomination process from the nomination committee. And for Faye's position, that was you that uh, selected Faye. And, uh, and she's, of course, a, a big um, representative of the, of the community and has a very good uh, voice. And I'm very happy to see you on board because I think you're going to be a very good addition to this group. So I'm very happy to have you. Yeah, and welcome. Oh, no, we need to vote. Because we need to ratify this. Even though this, the community selected uh, you, we still, as a board, because it's bylaws, we still need to do the voting now, okay? So, so we do need a motion. Yeah, we need a motion from the board. So Ryan has made a motion. Do we have a second? second. Mike Herschel. Mike, I'm letting, <laughs> I'm honoring, I'm honoring Ryan and Mike. I'm letting... Mike's made a second. Uh, all in favor, say A or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay or don't raise your hand. Okay, unanimous. It's approved. Uh, welcome new board members. Uh, and before we end, we're about to end the meeting and then go into Q&A. So before we do, I do want to say a heartfelt thank you to Ryan and Mike, for your, I won't say because you're going to stay on. We're not letting you go. <laughs> so, but uh, Ryan, I, I really, my, I've only been here a year, but I really appreciated your reasoned voice and willingness to speak up and, and uh, communicate with people in a res not, not only a respectful way, but a way that moved the conversation along. You were a, a very strong voice for, uh, for your issues on the board, and, and I really respected that. Super respectful. Mike, you were always willing to pitch in and help out and speak up, and I, you know, I, that is super important. And you brought the pers a perspective that wasn't widely shared on the board, and you're willing to, to even when you maybe felt alone, willing to speak that up and say it was I, that kind of courage and, and just dedication to the mission. I really appreciate. It. So thank you both for your time on the board. I also want to say thank yeah. you, Ryan. Thank, thank you, Mike. You. I want to say. A quick thank you to Batty as well, even though she's going to continue to help us in a non-board position. Um, I want to thank Batty. Um, I will highlight three things. Uh, there's a lot to like about Batty. Um, I don't have to limit myself to three things, but one is her go-getterness. I love that about you. Um, you jumped in. You went above and beyond. I don't even know how many days, weeks, months you dedicated to the Drupal Association. I've been on weekly calls with you. I know you've been on weekly calls with other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so many hours. I suspect all the people in the red t-shirts are here to make sure they get one of their leaders back um, <laughs> because she's been missing in action, I'm sure, um, partially at least. Um, 
given that she has pro you know generously provided us so much of her time uh, to help us. Um, let's see, what's something else to highlight? <laughs> um, actually, one of the things that I like a lot about what Buddy has done is like sort of she has connected us in really good ways. Like I don't know, it's a special skill of you, I think, but you have a way of bringing us all together. Um, and aligning us behind the same goals that I've never seen before. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. It's true, right? Yep. She, she has a way of, look, there's never been this many people even <laughs> at, a, <laughs> at a public board meeting. And I, and I suspect Batty has a big part to play in that. So you have a way of bringing everybody in the community, not just the board together. And um, that's been rel really helpful in, in creating the strategic plan and all of these things. And then maybe last but not least is your endless optimism you're like an optimistic leader which is great to work with like there is not a lot of doom you know and gloom it's always positive and um that's great so thank you buddy um, uh, so i do want to say <laughs> Just to be clear, I'm not going anywhere. So <laughs> if you think you can celebrate, you know, that's not <laughs> the case. <laughs> no, I think, uh, yeah, I thank you so much. Thank you, Dries, and thank you to all of you. You know, you're all amazing. And, and of course, you are the one that make the Drupal project awesome and continue doing that and continue coming to us and tell us about what we should do better and how we should do things differently because uh, there's, it's so easy to make these changes if, if, the, if we are all behind it. So thank you. I think I'm going to, yes, no more applauses. We are going to make the official closing, right? Yeah, yeah, we need a motion to close. So moved. What? Second. Thank yeah. you. Okay, what time is we it then? All right, uh, we are done. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, no. 4.42, we're done. 4.42, we're done with a public board meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am extremely proud because I think we, in my first public board meetings that we came to, I think we were like five that came, you know, and really people were that not so interested in, or they were that, but they were vocal about what we were doing. But, uh, you know, we want to go now into the Q&A section because we want to hear from you. What questions do you have? Uh, do you have a question? So I'm just going to put out the mic uh, and allow you to ask a question if you want to. Is anybody that wants to start? Everyone is super happy. The question can also go to Dries about, you know, so we can just start here. Hi, thanks very much. Uh, just a query about the marketing. I think it's great, the marketing initiative, uh, but it's, I, the um, Web Summit seems a very corporate event to be, to be targeting, and I think that's important, but I think we need to be targeting uh, expanding the community so the sort of th things I would love to see targeted are things like maker fairs, comic cons, things that young people go to, um, and you know, looking, looking to get new people into the community, new people contributing to projects. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to hear if you have any thoughts on th that sort of angle for it. I'll jump in. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your comments about that. Um, one of the reasons to choose the Web Summit is because it is an enterprise kind of corporate audience, and that's intentional, right? Because we want to make sure that we, as much as possible, we're opening up the door for Drupal to those people that are making those digital decisions. So that's one audience, or that's one group. So happy that we're doing that. Um, on the other side, I don't know. We haven't really talked about Comic-Con, and not sure. Um, my son just went to the New York one the other day, so we'll see what he can tell me about kind of who's going and what's going on. Um, but I do think one of the things we talked about the other day, which is on the radar, is what are we doing to build the university community so that we can get the kids, at least at the college, you know, the young people through college, and get them exposure to Drupal. I'm, I'm not sure we'll go any lower than college, but certainly, you know, we'll take kind of ideas around that, so. 
And maybe to add, yeah, maybe to add to that. So we are also working towards making the onboarding journey for a contributor on Drupal.org to be better and easier. There's all these tools and like. We work often with GitLab, of course, of all these things that we can automate. So, for example, if you register to Drupal.org, you know, then you're like, well, oh, cool. But there should be something that is welcoming you and, you know, get you through the first contribution or show you where the, the easy, novice uh, issues are and so on. So, I think there's many things that the marketing plan and the innovation plan is going to include. So, maybe to, to add a little bit to that. So, indeed, like, we could go to all these fairs. But if we cannot keep them after their first contribution, or even if they cannot get to the first contribution, it's uh, actually not a very good investment. Um, so we have to go on two fronts. Uh, one is to do that marketing, but two is also to keep whoever joins. Um, and uh, the associations work on these baselines on to understand what's the ratio today of who stays. And we don't really know uh, today, um, but we need to know. And then we need to work to improve that ratio. Um, so that's uh, maybe not super helpful to that question, but uh, oh, you're it's, right. it's adding yeah. to it. I think it's going to go in the plan. Um, any more questions? I saw more. Uh, <coughs> it's more. It's more. It's, it's a story because I, I'm very, very supportive of the the decision you made about uh, like focusing on the builders. Uh, I'm I'm one of these, uh, let's say, uh, let's say inhabitants of the village that went away, came back. Uh, I went to very, very a lot of, of technologies, so I, I love them all. Not only Drupal, but I went to Laravel. I went to different uh, existing things, and I have a wife uh, that a um, few years ago, maybe two years ago, asked me to make a website. So I say, yeah, let's do it in, in Drupal. Uh, so I do a little website for her in Drupal, and after two months, there was like a core upgrade, and uh, my host provider says. Uh, we just closed your, your, your website because uh, it's insecure. And I was, oh God, I should have spent time on the website of my wife, but I didn't want. I just want a website and then it will work for at least a few months, few years until I need to go there because I know it's secure. It's not maybe up to date, but it's secure. Uh, so I, I'm, I, I took all the files because it's three euro host, uh, hosting. I take all the file, FTP, I change, I upgrade everything, and then I re-put everything on the website. Two months later, core upgrade, and the, the website is closed because there is a security upgrade. My wife said, I don't want to use Drupal. And it, I was super sad because it was my fault, but I, I think there is something, a lesson here, where we can, um, not talking about big company, but also little users that would like to have like this kind of easy solution for builders, and have something that they can use for at least a few years without like being concerned too much about security and uh, this kind of stuff. I agree. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of smaller sites. Like I run several smaller sites on Drupal and right now every single one of them I have to do the composer upgrade manually. Um, that's all, like if you're not aware of it, there is the automatic updates initiative that uh, will, th that will be in core. That along with like project browser, like I said, automatic updates, recipes are a whole bunch of things that smaller sites need. A lot of a lot of people say, well, Drupal is not for smaller sites, even some of us. And I'm like, that's BS. Drupal can work great for smaller sites, but right now the um, the, the command line process is, is kind of a pain in the butt, you know. But once we can get beyond that, it's going to be wonderful. Tracy, you want to add something to it? Yeah, I mean, I think. Mike said it well, like if you look at the strategic initiatives that we have right now, um, like the ones you just mentioned, they're very much focused on sort of the ambitious uh, side builder and like think about automatic updates, project browser. These are not things honestly that enterprises need, right? They have their ways of doing updates and all of these things. They work with agencies to figure out which modules to install. So a lot of the things that we're doing are specifically targeting sort of, um, you know, smaller users, if you will, or, you know, less sophisticated organizations. And that is intentional. Um, and the way I think about it is, like, I, I do think Drupal is the best solution for larger organizations or organizations, but I also think about it as a funnel. Like, we need to get people into the project because a lot of us started with smaller websites, right? And then eventually moved on to build bigger and more complex websites where we, we 
we learned about Drupal through smaller projects and then we brought it into larger organizations. And that's kind of like a funnel or, mar or pipeline if you want to use kind of more business language. And so a lot, of these, a lot of these initiatives will help, I think, the smaller uh, users, but then also hopefully bring more people into Drupal more broadly. So uh, I, you know, I think we agree with you and we're trying to do something about it. Um, I will also say like um, we made the decision to build uh, Drupal on top of uh, third-party components, including Symfony, and a lot of the upgrades and the cadence of security updates are the result of using third-party components. Mm. Um, so like the reason we do these is because um, things like CK Editor or Symfony components, they are end of life. And when they go end of life, we you know, need to obviously encourage our users to upgrade. <laughs> so. Hi, my name is Sulama from uh, West Africa in Burkina Faso. So my English is not very good because uh, I come from uh, a country where we speak especially French. And uh, when I'm looking around me and I look at the color of my skin, <laughs> I'm somewhere afraid. It's not a question but uh, a recommendation or uh, I'm trying to say that uh, there is a continent uh, calling Africa. And uh, I don't see anything here about this continent. And we have uh, more than 3,000 persons who are involved in Drupal promotion. And we are doing many things there, but no representation on the web and in the Drupal Association. There is about uh, five years I'm coming to all Drupal uh, con to see which I, I can reach <laughs> to say, that, hey, look, please, we are here, Africa. But it's not yet the moment perhaps for us. Maybe I cannot integrate the Drupal bar. This is not my finality. But my question is, there is a plan. Is there a plan for Africa? Because the continent is very young, and uh, there are many people who can do something to promote Drupal there. That's a great question, and thank you for asking this question because this is exactly what we want to hear. We want to, we want to be, you know. And I think that uh, we should get you involved, <laughs> and uh, and not just that, but make sure that you know. I think that this is a definitely a priority for the board, and it has been since I've started. But I, I think that we can do much better. We are, uh, and we should look at it and and try to do better. I think. Does anyone want to add to this? Is there a plan? Uh, I, I am not aware of any plan specifically yeah. for Africa. Um, that being said, like I'm rolling off the board, but get in touch with Batty, get in touch with anyone else here. Everyone is, is fairly open and positive for this, but what we would need is probably like, what are the concrete steps that, that would be most beneficial to the African community? Like, is there one thing that we can do that will just make, make you all just get huge? If you have, like, any type of ideas like that is, is really helpful for us because, so, as you can see, we are not from Africa, so we do not, we do not have your perspective. But just want to add something from a learning that I have at GitLab. Um, and hopefully I can maybe transfer some of that to the, the Drupal ecosystem, if you will. Um, I'm working together with the chaos community and also the all in open source, uh, dot com is a website um, that they're working on a badging system on how diverse your project is in both inclusivity language, uh, he, she, they, them, those, those words, but also towards um, regions uh, and uh, lots of different factors. But they're trying to figure out how to automate a little bit of that assessment and to then to give you that diamond badge of at least your project um, has some of the qualitative, like the qualitative ways of understanding uh, that there's diversity in the project. It doesn't solve all the world's problems, of course, and I fully, fully agree with you uh, that we should do a lot more. 
uh, uh, maybe even go beyond uh, in the way that's possible. But that could be a start, and maybe also for Drupal.org, and I'm brainstorming here, so there's no promises or there's nothing that I can actually decide on my own, but maybe to collaborate with that initiative um, and allow these badges maybe on the modules or on core or on, yeah. on other things. And the Drupal Association did organize today a round table for local associations to come together. Because your question was, is there a plan for Africa? Um, I can say again, is there a plan for Europe? Is there a plan for the US? Are we having as a Drupal Association a lot of interaction with the local associations? The answer is, it's too little. So we, we did organize a local association board today and we are, we are trying to figure out how we can actually get the local associations to work more stronger together with us. We had in the room strong, new, uh, strong local associations that have staff members, they have like a full board, they are running 500 people events. And then we have people from Turkey, Turkey? Tur how do you say it in, in English? Turkey. Turkey. Uh, and a brand new community that came there and said like, hey, we are new, uh, we want to start doing it. Yeah, you two are here, I saw you. And, uh, and we want to start doing something uh, and get help. So I think that that's something that we could do in the, in the Drupal community, um, that, or the Drupal Association, where we can actually figure out a way how we can facilitate and help each other, because the power of the 15 people who are working at the Drupal Association, we can only do so much that these 15 people can do, but we need to enable somehow a good network. And I think that was a good conversation that we had today with the local association community. And if I could get your contact, we'll add you to the local association that we're, the group we're Yes, together. yes, totally. More questions? Or anything that? Thank you. Um, so yesterday in the keynote, I, it was mentioned almost offhand that people might feel uncomfortable with the idea of the Drupal Association doing more marketing. Um, and I think, uh, I wonder if some of that conflict maybe that people are feeling is because we see marketing in the rest of the corporate world and how it maybe conflicts with the open web values that the Drupal Association has said is at our core. And so I'm curious if there's been any discussions or thoughts uh, from the board is, if there is a place for Drupal to offer a different perspective, a different template on how to approach marketing, specifically I'll say digital marketing, because I think a lot of that doesn't apply to going to conferences and these other areas that you're working on, or whether you actually think that that's like too much for the Drupal association to take on and really we kind of just have to accept that the world of marketing is what it is, and maybe it's a five or ten year problem for us to think about how we, um, you know, put a, a more open and, you know, privacy respecting and all, all of those other aspects of the open web flavor into our marketing. Want me to start? And then you can, you can add on. So um, I think whatever plan we come up with for marketing, we will have kind of the Drupal values around it, that certainly would be the goal. So I'm not exactly sure what you mean when you say the corporate marketing, but I will tell you that that is a lens that we will look at to make sure, Nikhil, jump in here too, that that's a lens that we will look at to make sure we have the right Drupal values, if you will, around it. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. So, uh, the, uh, so, so, so for that conference, um, the, the booth design that, that you shared, we don't, we don't have it here, but it had like a whole bunch of really like kind of open webby type type uh, slogans on there like your data you know and a bunch of things like that which I'm not I, I, I don't remember exactly what they were but I was like yeah open web <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't quite answer your questions but it can be done uh, both Nikhil and Lynn are extremely extremely intelligent with this so well, and I think it's important, like some of the low-hanging fruit, because we really haven't done a concerted effort, is not around that digital marketing space. It's around brand awareness. Like that's literally where we're starting with this, is just increasing Drupal's brand awareness, because there are some, like in other places in open source, there are some things that are easier done together. And if we're constantly reintroducing Drupal either to our devs or to companies, like just making sure that they're, they're understanding what modern Drupal is as opposed to like legacy Drupal and that they have a good opinions about the actual product. Like, so I think that's important to keep in mind. We're not going down the, the, the route of really starting to do funnel conversions or any of that kind of stuff. 
anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> maybe you're talking about lead generation. Is that what? Yeah, and like sort of yeah, surveillance yeah, marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no plan for that. We're gonna make it impossible to delete your Drupal.org account. <laughs> You can never leave. One more question. Oh, here we go, right? Okay, great. From our newest board member. Uh, so this question is actually on behalf of the diversity and inclusion community. It's something that we've been talking about. And I have tried to Google it, but it gets buried in all of the modules. So <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, is uh, the Drupal Association does a really great job at collecting all kinds of information on the forms. You know, when we sign up for events like this, um, it asks all kinds of questions about, you know, ethnicity and, 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 and gender identity. It's fantastic. And the diversity and inclusion community um, has had some conversation about, hey, can we, can we get some of that data? So my question is, is that data public or could it be? It, it, I, <laughs> right. I will continue to follow up as best it's, I can. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. So my understanding is it's not public today. Uh, at the, the, the information we collect on, on d.org is not public today. Um, also, I would point out that I believe that information is voluntary. People are not required to fill it out, uh, obviously, out of respect. So, yes, we have the data. I'm not sure how expansive it is. Um, and I, I would presume, at least legally, it would be okay to, in an anonymous way, uh, uh, make, expose some of that data. Um, and so we can talk about that. At, uh, and that's a great question meeting. at a European yeah. conference, yeah. because we are all about data privacy and we don't want to do it this way. Exactly. So it's a great question. Uh, thank you for that input. And I think it is, it's, uh, we need to uh, stop because the, the room is going to be taken over with another session, I think. Yeah, I um, and we have a break, but uh, feel free to come to us uh, anytime. If you have any questions on Drupal Slack, we are there. Uh, join us anytime. And thank you for coming in this really warm uh, meeting room. <laughs> thank so, you, everyone. <laughs> thank you.